Some months ago, someone I respect deeply once got into the habit of telling people publicly how much of a good graphic designer I was. At other times, he would look straight at me and assure me that I was smart and very talented each time we had the opportunity to talk. Even though I made a mistake about some job, he still would commend me before people that I was terrific and he would assure me that I was a smart creative. I didn't know what he was doing at the time, but his action and encouragement charged me to love myself and appreciate my own skill, even when I didn't feel it was good enough. Soon enough, my confidence grew, and each time he gave me a task, I found myself surpassing his expectations. I enjoyed being around him, and somehow, he had influenced me to believe in myself. Would you give up such persons or treasure them? Such is the power of influence. Most times, we cannot explain why we struggle in building relationships with people, but the reason is often obvious. As the Bible says, if you must have friends, you must show yourself friendly. If you must build relationships that are effective and be able to influence people to your thinking, you must do it the right way. And since its first publication in 1936, Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People, has been the go-to book for everyone who wants to grow in their relationship building techniques. Successful people do not underestimate the value of winning people to their side, so they spend time grooming themselves on how to attract and influence people. In today's video, I will be sharing with you lessons we can learn from Carnegie's classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People. If you're new here, subscribe to this channel so you don't miss other interesting videos like this. 1. Do not criticize, condemn, or complain. If there is anything I have learned about influencing people, it is that you don't get people to change by criticizing them. In fact, people resist destructive criticisms. In his book, Dale Carnegie described how Abraham Lincoln learned this lesson the hard way. He had publicly criticized a man, and it had almost led to Abraham Lincoln's death. Since then, no matter how angry he was, President Lincoln would never criticize or demean anyone. Carnegie writes, Any fool can criticize, condemn, or complain, and most fools do. It takes character and self-control to be forgiven. People are repulsed by those who put them down, but are apt to run to those who encourage them, not flatter them, but charge them to be better. 2. Be generous with praise I recently completed a project for our company, and my boss wrote an appreciation note that got me excited. You can imagine how I was willing to do more the next time he asked me to carry out another related project. Nothing makes people do more than they intend, more than generous praise. Carnegie argues in the book that every human appreciates and wants to be praised. If God, our Creator, does much more for us when He is praised, you can imagine that humans alike will do more when praised. Carnegie uses Shrub as an example throughout the book. As someone who exemplifies all of the tenets Carnegie preaches, Schwab used praise as the foundation of all his relationships. In my wide association in life, meeting with many and great people in various parts of the world, Schwab declared, I have yet to find the person, however great or exalted in their station, who did not do better work and put forth greater effort under a spirit of approval than they would ever do under a spirit of criticism. 3. Remember their name Once, I was in a meeting, and I remember a man suddenly called out my name in full. Several months before, I had met the man and we had been introduced briefly. Now, I was surprised he could still remember my name, and from then on, I was taken by him. Remembering people's names when you meet them is difficult. You usually meet a lot of people, so it's challenging, but if you can train yourself to remember people's names, it makes them feel special and important. Carnegie writes, Remember that a person's name is to that person the sweetest and most important sound in any language. 4. Be genuinely interested in other people. People don't care how much we know until they know how much we care. One of the ways people respond faster to you is by being genuinely interested in them. This is what I have found, and which Dale Carnegie has confirmed that people will respond to you when you talk about their problems than when you talk about your problems. The reason is that people are only interested in themselves, however way they may appear modest. When you remember people's names, ask them questions that encourage them to talk about their interests and passions. It makes them believe you like them, and so they readily open up to you. Someone wrote that you should listen 75% and only speak 25% of the time. Carnegie writes, You make more friends in two months by becoming genuinely interested in other people than you can in two years by trying to get other people interested in you. 5. Know the value of charm Here's the thing. Most success are not based on talents or skills. They're based on charm. They're based on people liking you. A person can be talented and highly skilled and yet may have a repulsive attitude and appearance. Another may be less skilled have a proper attitude and so much charm, and will be liked. Charm wins over a certificate all the time, because we love to be around people who are charming. Your certificate may open the door for you, but charm, social skills and talent will keep you there. Work to become someone people love being around. 
be genuinely interested in others, it will open more doors to you. 6. Be quick to acknowledge your own mistakes. You're not perfect, and there's nothing more dangerous than putting up the front that you're perfect. People hardly ever forgive those who act perfectly when they make minor mistakes. But when you've let people know you're not perfect, by always being quick to admit your mistakes, you gain respect and become likable. People will become less defensive and more agreeable when you're humble enough to admit your own mistakes. You must always be willing to take responsibility for your actions because when you do, it will help you build stable personal and professional relationships with people. 7. Don't attempt to win an argument. Carnegie writes that you can never win an argument even if you seemingly appear to have won because the other party felt beaten. Carnegie writes, the best way to win any argument is to avoid it. Don't strive to be correct, strive to agree. Carnegie cited an old saying, a man convinced against his will is of the same opinion still. 8. Begin in common ground. When you disagree with a person, start on common grounds and move slowly into difficult subjects. When you start by being accusatory, you may lose ground with subjects on which you agree. 9. Have others believe your conclusion is their own. You cannot force people to believe anything. People who influence others always seek to persuade rather than enforce. Just because you have enforced people doesn't mean they agree with you. A good leader will plant seeds that encourage people to make their own conclusion. Instead of claiming people are wrong, a good leader will find common ground and persuade them that what they really want is your desired outcome, obviously without telling them that is the case. 10. Make people feel important. People would naturally love you when you always make them feel important. When you make efforts to smile, remember people's names, give genuine praises, understand their interest and discuss them, it makes people feel important. This is what winning friends and influencing people is all about. This is how you build effective relationships that build your life. The premise of all these principles is, to have, you must give, to be loved, you must love, to receive care, you must care. If this video inspired you, subscribe to our channel. We love you.